ओम भूर्भ स्वह तत्सवितुर्वरेण्यम भृगोदेव सदीम दीयो न प्रचोदयात ओं शांति 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 अरुणाचला शिवा अरुणाचला शिवा अरुणाचला शिवा अरुणाचला my dear friends i am going to give you sixth video on the talks by bhagwan sri ramana maharishi i start this video with the talk number 96 major e w chadwick of what nature is the realization of westerners who relate that they have had flashes of cosmic consciousness maharshi replied it came as a flash and disappeared as such that which has a beginning must also end only when the ever present consciousness is realized will it be permanent consciousness is indeed always with us everyone knows i am no one can deny his own being the man in deep slumber is not aware while awake he seems to be aware but it is the same person there is no change in the one who slept and the one who is now awake in deep sleep he was not aware of his body there was no body consciousness in the wakeful state he is aware of his body there is body consciousness therefore the difference lies in the emergence of body consciousness and not in any change in the real consciousness the body and body consciousness arise together and sink together all this amounts to saying that there are no limitations in deep sleep whereas there are limitations in the waking state these limitations are the bondages the feeling the body is i is the error this false sense of i must go the real i is always there it is here and now it never appears anew and disappears again that which is must also persist forever that which appears a new will also be lost compare deep sleep and waking the body appears in one state but not in the other therefore the body will be lost the consciousness was pre existent and will survive the body in fact there is no one who does not say i am the wrong knowledge of i am the body is the cause of all the mischief this wrong knowledge must go that is realization realization is not acquisition of anything new nor it is a new faculty it is only removal of all kama plague major chadwick again asks a question but people will not be content with the simplicity they want complexity Maharshi replied quite so because they want something elaborate and attractive and puzzling so many religions have come into existence and each of them is so complex and each creed in each religion has its own other ends and antagonists for example an ordinary christian will not be satisfied unless he is told that god is somewhere in the far of heavens not to be reached by us unaided christ alone a new him and christ alone can guide us who worship christ and be saved if told the simple truth the kingdom of heaven is within you he is not satisfied and will read complex and far fetched meaning in such statements mature minds alone can grasp the simple truth in all its nakedness major chadwick later expressed a certain involuntary fear while meditating he feels the spirit separated from the gross body and the sensation creates a fright 
Maharshi replied, To whom is the fright? It is all due to the habit of identifying the body with the self. Repeated experience of separation will make one familiar and the fright will cease. 19th November 1935, talk number 97. One Mr. Ramachandra, a gentleman from Ambala asked where the heart is and what realization is. Maharshi, the heart is not physical, it is spiritual, hirdayam, that is hirat plus ayam, this is the center. It is that from which thoughts arise, on which they subsist and where they are resolved. The thoughts are the content of the mind and they shape the universe. The heart is the center of all. Yatova imani bhutani jayante, that from which these beings come into existence, etc., is said to be Brahma in the Upanishads. That is the heart. Brahma is the heart. How to devotee, how to realize the heart? Maharishi, there is no one who, even for a tries, fails to experience the self. For no one admits that the he ever stands apart from the self. He is the self. The self is the heart. Devotee, it is not clear. Maharishi, in deep sleep you exist, awake you remain. The same self is in both states. The difference is only in the awareness and the non-awareness of the world. The world rises with the mind and sets with the mind. That which rises and sets is not the self. The self is different, giving rise to the mind, sustaining it and resolving it. So the self is the underlying principle. When asked who who you are, you place your hand on the right side of the breast and say, I am. There you involuntarily point out the self. The self is thus known, but the individual is miserable because he confounds the mind and the body with the self. This confusion is due to wrong knowledge. Elimination of wrong knowledge is alone needed. Such elimination results in realization. Devotee, how to control the mind? Maharishi, what is mind? Who is the mind? Devotee, mind always wanders, I cannot control it. Maharishi, it is the nature of the mind to wander. You are not the mind. The mind springs up and sinks down. It is impermanent, transitory, whereas you are eternal. There is nothing but the self. To inhere in the self is the thing. Never mind the never mind the mind. If its source is sought, it will vanish leaving the self unaffected. Devotee, no one need to seek to control the mind. So one need not seek to control the mind. Maharishi, there is no mind to control if you realize the self. The mind vanishing, the self shines forth. In the realized man, the mind may be active or inactive. The self alone remains for him. For the mind, the body and the world are not separate from the self. They rise from and sink into the self. They do not remain apart from the self. Can they be different from the self? Only be aware of the self. Why worry about these shadows? How do they affect the self? Talk number 98. Bhagwan further explained, the self is the heart, the heart is self-illuminous, light arises from the heart and reaches the brain, which is the seat of the mind, the world is seen with the mind, that's why by the reflected light of the self, it is perceived with the aid of the mind, when the mind is illumined, it is aware of the world, when it is not itself, so illumined, it is not aware of the world. If the mind is turned in toward the source of light, objective knowledge ceases and self alone shines from forth as the heart. The moon shines by the reflected light of the sun. When the sun has set, the moon is useful for revealing objects. When the sun has risen, no 
one near the moon although the pale disk of the moon is visible in the sky so it is with the mind and the heart the mind is useful because of its reflected light it is used for seeing objects when it is turned inwards the source of illumination shines forth by itself and the mind remains dim and useless like the moon in daytime talk number 99 A sanyasi asked, it is said that the self is beyond the mind and yet the realization with the mind. Manu na manute, mansa na matam, and mansa veda maptayam. The mind cannot think it, it cannot be thought of by the mind and the mind alone can realize it. How are these contradictions to be reconciled? Maharishi, Atman is realized with Naruta Manas, dead mind. Atma is realized by Mirta Manas, dead mind, that is mind devoid of thoughts and turned inward. Then the mind sees its own source and becomes that. It is not as the subject perceiving an object. When the room is dark, a lamp is necessary to illumine and eyes to cognize the object. But when the sun is rising, there is no need of a lamp and the objects are seen. And to see the sun, no lamp is necessary. It is enough that you turn your eyes toward the self-luminous sun. Similarly, with the mind, to see the objects, the reflected light of the mind is necessary. To see the heart, it is enough that the mind is turned towards it. Then the mind loses itself and the heart shines forth. Talk number 100. Later, Sri Bhagawan quoted from Kavalya some verses and explained a the supreme knowledge, absolute witness, the self-shining core, the heart, the self. The individual, the jiva, the knower, consisting of virti, the mode of mind stuff and reflect light in the latent form, leads to the internal intellect. intellect and the outgoing mound buddhi and manas consisting of virati and reflected light as a sprout this is the antahakarna the inner organ it is split modes taking shape as objects common knowledge together form the world as we perceive it the pure knowledge the jiva Paramatar, the knower, the intellect and the mind, Paramana, perception, moods and knowledge, Phala Chaitanya, the moods of mind take shape as external objects and the light reflected on the moods illumine the object. Now, of mind look for light illumining them the mind becomes still and the light remains self shining the undulating mind that is the mind associated with the rajas activity and tamas darkness is commonly known as the mind devoid of rajas and tamas it is pure and self shining this is self realization therefore the mind is said to be the means for it C. Pure Consciousness, said to be the eternal or the ever-present witness, Antahakarna, inner organ, plus the reflected light, that is Jiva plus Paramatar. Moods together with the light are said to be Paramiya, the knower of these the objects are gross and the light is called Phala Chaitanya. In the Jiva, the inner organ, organ antahakarna consist of sattva knowledge light rajas moods of mind intellect mind tamas gross objective the world similarly for the cosmos the cosmic mind the eternal being sattva ishvara the lord of the universe rajas the individual jiva tamas the universe brahma Sat being called the Adhara, the substratum, Chit, knowledge, Ananda, bliss, called Vishesha, differentiation by Maya, 
natural the universe or the world artificial multiplicity of objects maya cannot obscure sat but it does obscure chit and ananda making them appear as particulars a rope corresponds to being substratum up in dim light maya illusion appears as a snake the artificial particular as shown in e g sat being the substratum adhara from this proceeds the particular namely the jiva who wielded by ignorance identifies himself with the gross body here ignorance stands for not investigating the self jiva is in fact knowledge only yet owing to ignorance the wrong identity with the gross body results again the master illustrated it with the red hot iron ball tapta ahya pindavat a ball of iron plus fire together form red hot iron ball the world plus chit pure knowledge together form the jiva the individual talk number 101 A gentleman from Ambala asked what is the rationalistic explanation of Drupadi's sari becoming endless maharishi spiritual matters cannot be fitted into rationalism spirituality is transcendental the miracle was after Drupadi had surrendered herself the secret lies in surrender devotee how to reach the heart Maharshi where are you now that you want to reach the heart are you standing apart from the self devotee i am in my body maharshi in a particular spot or all over devotee all over i am extending all over the body maharshi where from do you extend devotee i do not know maharshi yes you are always in the heart you are never away from it in order that you should reach it considered how you are in deep sleep and in the waking state these states are also not yours they are of the ego the consciousness remains the same and undifferentiated undifferentiated all through devotee i understand but i cannot feel so maharishi who is the ignorance find it out devotee all this is so difficult maharshi the idea of difficulty is itself wrong it will not help you to gain what you want again i ask who finds it difficult devotee i see that i am coming round to i maharshi because you are always that and never away from that there is nothing so simple as being the self it requires no effort no aid one has to leave off the wrong identity and be in his eternal natural inherent state talk number 102 he returned with the request next day he said it is said that one should receive instruction from a guru mere reading of books is not helpful i have read many books but there is no practical help de- derived from such learning please tell me what i should do how i should do it at what times in which places and so on the master remained silent his silence seemed to say here and now be at peace and tranquil that's all but the questioner could not interpret it and that way he wanted something concrete talk number 103 The next day Sri Bhagwan said these people want some japa dhyana or yoga or something similar without their saying what they have been doing so far what more can be said to them again why japa eats flas roti etc who is is it that makes the japa who gets the fruits there of can they not look to the self or again even if instructed by others to do japa or dhyana they do it for some time but are always looking to some results for example visions dreams or thaumaturgic powers 
if they do not find them they say they are not progressing or the tapas is not effective visions etc are no signs of progress mere performance of tapas is its progress also steadiness is what is required moreover they must entrust themselves to their mantra or their god and wait for its grace they don't do so J- japa even once uttered has its own good effect whether the individual is aware or not 28th november 1935 talk number 104 Mrs Kisori Lal an officer of the railway board government of India hails from Delhi he looks he looks simple gentle and dignified in behavior he has gastric ulcer and has arranged for his board and lodging in the town 5 years ago he took up the study of devotional literature he is a bhakta of shri krishna he could feel krishna in all that he saw krishna often appeared to him and made him happy his work was going on without any effort on his part everything seemed to be done for him by krishna himself later he came in contact with the mahatma who advised him to study vedanta and take, take to nirankara upasana that is devotion to formless being he has since read about 700 books of philosophy and vedanta including the upanishads ashtavakra avadhuta and shrimad bhagavat gita shrimad bhagavat gita he has also studied sri bhagwan's works in english and is much impressed by them Once when he was in the jaws of death no other thought haunted him but that he had not yet visited Sri Bhagwan in his life so he has come here on a short visit he prays only for Sri Bhagwan to touch and his grace the master said to him atam atmaya vaham guda kesa that is i am atma atma is the guru and atma is grace also no one remains without the atma he is always in contact no external touch is necessary my dear friends all of us are also out of our ignorance wait for somebody to come and help it is good somebody will come but make sure your own self itself is guru that is also have faith in you and once you start having faith in yourself a physical guru is likely to come any time in future so god sends the guru in any form god himself may come in the form of a physical guru or a physical guru may appear and help you so first thing you start believing in your own self that is the most important point and surrender to god now it will be the worry of god to help you he may himself come in any other form he may come in the physical form or he may send some other physical guru to help you but first thing start believing in yourself so grace is also obtained from the self which lies within your spiritual heart start believe believe in yourself that is the most important point now further devotee i understand i do not mean external touch maharshi nothing is more intimate than the atma devotee again sri krishna appeared to me 3 months back and said why do you ask me for nirankara upasana it is only sarva bhuteshu cha atmanam sarva bhutani cha atmani the self in all and all in the self mercy that contains the whole truth even this is opacharika indirect there is in fact nothing but the atma the world is only a projection of the mind the mind originates from the atma so atma alone is the one being devotee yet it is difficult to realize maharshi there is nothing to realize it is nitya 
शुद्ध बुद्ध मुक्त द एटर्नल प्योर अवेयर एंड लिब्रेटेड स्टेट इट इज नेचुरल एंड एटर्नल देर इज नथिंग न्यू टू गेन ऑन द अदर हैंड ए मैन मस्ट लूज हिज इग्नोरेंस दैट्स ऑल दिस इग्नोरेंस मस्ट बी ट्रेस्ड टू इट्स ओरिजिन to whom is this ignorance of what is one ignorant there are the subject and the object such a duality is characteristics of the mind the mind is from the atma devotee yes ignorance itself cannot exist he finally surrendered saying just as a doctor learns what is wrong with the patient and treats him accordingly so May Sri Bhagwan do with me. He also said that he had lost all the inclination to the study of books and learn from them. Talk number one hundred five. Maharshi, no, not so. The method is only one. Uddalka started teaching Sat Eva Somaya. There is only being illustrating it with Swet Ketu's fast. Number one, Sat the being in the individual is made obvious by the fast. Second, this Sat being is similar in all as honey gathered from different flowers. Third, there is no difference in the Sat of individuals as illustrated by the state of deep sleep. The question arises: If so, why does each know it in the sleep? because the individuality is lost there is only sat left illustration rivers lost in the ocean if lost is there sat fifth surely as when a tree is pruned it grows again that is a sure sign of its life but is it there even in that dormant condition sixth yes take the instance of salt and water the presence of the salt in water is subtle though invisible to the eye it is recognized by other senses how is one to know it what is the other means <coughs> seven by inquiry as the man left in the gandhara forest regained his home <coughs> it's a in evolution and in evolution in manifestation and resolution sat alone exist tejah prasayam devatayam the light merges in the supreme ninth an an insincere man is hurt by the touch of fire test his insincerity is brought out by fire sincerity is self evident a true man or a self realized man remains happy without being affected by the false appearance namely the world birth and death etc whereas the false or ignorant man is miserable 29th november 1935 Talk number one hundred six. Swami Yogananda with four others arrived at eight hundred forty-five a.m. He looks big, but gentle and well groomed. He has dark fl- flowing hair hanging over his shoulders. The group had lunch in the ashram. Talk number one hundred six. Swami Yogananda with four others arrived at 8:45 a.m. <coughs> he looks big but gentle and well groomed. He has dark flowing hair hanging over his shoulders. The group had lunch in the ashram. Mr. C. R. Wright, his secretary, asked how shall I realize God? Maharshi, God is an unknown entity. Moreover, He is external, whereas the self is always with you, and it is you. Why do you leave out what is intimate and go in for what is external, devotee? What is this self again, Maharshi? The self is known to everyone, but not clearly. You always exist. The being is the self i am is the name of god of all the definitions of god none is indeed so well put as the biblical statement i am that i am in exodus chapter number 3 <coughs> there are other statements such as brahma vaham 
अहम ब्रह्मास्मी एंड सो हम बटन एंड सो डायरेक्ट एज द नेम जे वो हा आई एम द एब्सोल्यूट बींग इज वॉट इज इट इज द सेल्फ इट इज गॉड नोइंग द सेल्फ गॉड इज नॉन इन फैक्ट गॉड इज नन अदर देन द सेल्फ डेबोटी वाई आर देयर गुड एंड इवल महर्षि दे आर रिलेटिव टर्म देर मस्ट बी ए सब्जेक्ट टू नो द गुड एंड इवल who that subject is the ego trace the source of the ego it ends in the self the source of the ego is god this definition of god is probably more concrete and better understood by you devotee so it is so it is how to get bliss maharishi bliss is not something to be got on the other hand you are always bliss this desire is born of the sense of incompleteness to whom is the sense of incompleteness and quiet in deep sleep you were blissful now you are not so what has interposed between that bliss and this non bliss it is the ego seek its source and find you are bliss there is nothing new to get you have on the other hand to get rid of your ignorance while makes you think that you are other than bliss for whom is this ignorance it is to the ego trace the source of the ego then the ego is lost and bliss remains over it is eternal you are that here and now that is the master key for solving all doubts the doubts arise in the mind the mind is born of the ego the ego rises from the self search the source of the ego and the self is revealed that alone remains the universe is only expanded self it is not different from the self devotee what is the best way of living maharishi it differs according as one is a gyani or a gyani a gyani does not find anything different or separate from the self all are in the self it is wrong to imagine that there is the world that there is a body in it and that you dwell in the body if the truth is known the universe and what is beyond it will be found to be only in the self the outlook differs according to the sight of the person the sight is from the eye the eye must be located somewhere if you are seeing with the gross eyes you find others gross if with the subtle eyes that is the mind others appear subtle if the eye becomes the self the self being infinite the eye is infinite there is nothing else to see different from the self he thanked maharishi he was told that the best way of thinking is to remain always as the self talk number 107 later the yogi asked how is the spiritual uplift of the people to be effected what are the instructions to be given them this yogi means swami yogananda maharishi they differ according to the temperaments of the individuals and according to the spiritual ripeness of their mind there cannot be any instruction and mass devoti why does god permit suffering in the world should he not with his omnipotence do away with it at one stroke and ordain the universal realization of god maharishi suffering is the way for realization of god devoti should he not ordain differently maharishi it is the way devoti are yoga religion etc antidotes to suffering mercy they help you to overcome suffering devoti why should there be suffering mercy who suffers what is suffering no answer finally the yogi rose up prayed for sri bhagwan's blessing for his own work and expressed great regret for his hasty return he looked very sincere and devoted and even emotional Swami Yogananda has set up his ashrama in USA. His guru Swami Yuktananda instructed him to go to western countries especially America and teach the this teach the 
Vedanta teachings to the Western people because they need the teachings of Vedanta, especially in his ashram, Kriya Yogi is taught. So this is a very, very ancient Indian process of yoga. Talk number 108, in continuation of dialogue 105, Uddalka explained that all proceeds from Sat as illustrated by deep sleep, the body takes food, food requires water, water requires heat to digest the food, Tejo Mula Vin Vichya, it is Sat Praya Sam Devatayam, merged in the being if we are sat samparnaha merged in the being how is it that we do not realize it mercy replies just as the honey gathered from different flowers form the bulk in a honeycomb and each drop does not indicate where from it has been collected so also Sat Samparnaha in deep sleep, death, etc. People do not recognize their individualities. They slip into what state unaware. But when they wake up, they regain their original individual characteristics. Devotee, honey, though collected from different flowers, becomes the bulk and does not possess individual characteristics. But the individual parts do not also exist in the drop and they do not return to their sources. Whereas the individuals after going to deep sleep wake up individuals as formerly, how is it? Mercy, just as the rivers discharged into the ocean lose their individuality, still the waters evaporate and return as rain on the hills and through rivers to the ocean, so also the individuals going to sleep lose their individualities and yet return as individuals according to their previous vasanas unawares. Thus, even in death, Sat is not lost. Devotee, how can that be? Mahasi, see how a tree whose branches are cut grows again. So long as the life source is not affected, it will grow. Similarly, the samskaras, anamnes, anam, anamnesis sink into the heart in death. They do not perish. They will in right time sprout forth from the heart. That is how the jivas are reborn. Devotee, how does the wide universe sprout forth from such subtle samskaras remaining sunk in the heart? Mercy, just as a big banyan tree sprouts from a tiny seed, so the wide universe with the names and forms sprout forth from the heart. Devotee, if the origin is Sat, why is it not felt? Mercy, the salt in the lump is visible, it is invisible in solution, still its, its existence is known by taste. Similarly, Sat, though not recognized by the intellect, can still be realized in a different way, that is, transcendentally. Devotee, how? Mercy, just as a man blindfolded and left by robbers in a jungle inquires his way home and returns there, so also the ignorant one blinded by ignorance inquires of those not so blinded and seeks his own source and returns to it. 13th December 1935, talk number 109, two gentlemen from Ambala, the Punjab had been here for a few weeks just before taking leave of Sri Bhagwan. One of them asked how he should remove the spiritual drowsiness of his friends or of other people in general. Mercy, have you removed your own spiritual drowsiness? The force which is set up to remove your own drowsiness will also operate in other centers. There is the willpower with which you can act on others, but it is on a lower plan and not a desirable. Take care of yourself first. 
devotee how to remove my own drowsiness mahersi whose drowsiness is it and quiet turn within turn all your enquiries towards search for self the force set up within you will operate on others also 14th december 1935 talk number 110 An American lady asked Bhagwan what his experience of samadhi was when suggested that she should relate her experiences and ask if they were right she replied that sri bhagwan's experiences ought to be correct and should be known whereas her own were on important she thus wanted to know if sri bhagwan felt his body hot or cold in samadhi if he spent the first 3 and a half years of his stay at trivannamalai in prayer and so on 16th december 1935 talk number 111 Maharshi replies samadhi transcends mind and speech and cannot be described for example the state of deep slumber cannot be described samadhi state can still less be explained devotee but i know that i am unconscious in deep sleep maharshi consciousness and unconsciousness are only modes of the mind samadhi transcends the mind devotee still you can say what it is like maharshi you will know only when you are in samadhi 16th december 1935 talk number 111 A Telugu gentleman asked about Brahma Bhavana. Maharshi, not to think I am Brahma or all is Brahma is itself a Jivana Mukti. He asked about inspired action. Maharshi, let activities go on; they do not affect the pure self. Seventeenth December, nineteen thirty-five. Talk number one hundred twelve. Mr P Brunton while reading Upadesa Manjari came across the statement that the ego the world and god are all unreal he desired to use a different word for god or at least a qualifying adjective that is the creative force or personal god Sri Bhagwan explained that god means Samasti, that is all that is plus the being in the same way as I means the individual plus the being and the world means the variety plus being. The being is in all cases real. The all, the variety, and the individuals in each case unreal. So also. in the union of the real and the unreal the mixing up or the false identification is wrong it amounts to saying sad asad vilakshana that is transcending the real and the unreal sat and asat reality is that which transcends all concepts including that of god in as much as the name of god is used it cannot be true the hebrew word jehovah i am expresses god correctly absolute being is beyond expression the word cannot be replaced nor need it be replaced the english man casually said that in prehistoric ages there was a spirituality but not high intellect Whereas intellect has now developed, Sri Bhagwan pointed out that intellect raises the question whose intellect the answer is of the self. So intellect is a tool of the self. The self uses intellect for measuring variety. Intellect is not the self, nor apart from the self. The self alone is eternal. Intellect is only a phenomenon. Phenomenon. People speak of the development of variety as being the development of intellect. Intellect was always there. 
धाता यथा पर्वम अकल्पायत द क्रिएटर क्रिएटेड जस्ट एज बिफोर कंसीडर योर ओन स्टेट डे बाय डे देर इज नो इंटेलेक्ट इन ड्रीमलेस डीप स्लीप बट इट इज देयर नाउ देर इज नो इंटेलेक्ट इन ए चाइल्ड इट डिवेल्स विद एज हाउ कुड देयर बी मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ इंटेलेक्ट विदाउट इट्स सीड इन द स्लीप स्टेट एंड इन द चाइल्ड वाई गो टू हिस्ट्री टू टीच दिस फंडामेंटल फैक्ट द लेवल ऑफ ट्रूथ ऑफ हिस्ट्री इज ओनली द लेवल ऑफ ट्रूथ ऑफ द individual talk number 113 a telugu gentleman asked about karma yoga shri bhagwan said that the man should act as an actor on the stage in all actions there is the sat as the underlying principle remember it and act he asked about the purity of mind chitta shuddhi shri bhagwan said that chitta shuddhi is to engage in one thought only to the exclusion of all others it is otherwise called one pointedness of the mind the practice of meditation purifies the mind 23rd december 1935 talk number 114 baron von bolbein austrian and east german baron asked there should be harmony between knowledge of the self and knowledge of the world they must develop side by side is it right does maharshi agree maharshi yes devotee beyond the intellect and before wisdom dawns there will be pictures of the world passing before one's consciousness is it so shri bhagwan pointed out the parallel passage in dakshina murti stotram to signify that the pictures are like reflections in a mirror again from the upanishad as in the mirror so in the world of means as in the water so in the world of gandharvas as shadow and sunlight in brahmaloka devotee there is spiritual awakening since 1930 all the world over does maharshi agree maharshi said the development is according to your sight the baron asked again if maharshi would induce a spiritual trance and give him a message which is unspoken but still understandable no answer was made 25th december 1935 talk number 115 mr m friedman even without any initial desires there are some strange experiences for us where from do they arise maharshi the desire may not be there now nf if it was there before though forgotten by you now it is bearing fruit in due course that is how the gyani is said to have prar of the left for him of course it is only according to others point of view talk number 116 devotee jiva is said to be bound by karma is it so mercy let let karma enjoy its fruits as long as you are the doer so long you are the enjoyer devotee how to get released from karma maharshi see whose karma it is you will find you are not the doer then you will be free this requires grace of god for which you should pray to him worship him and meditate on him the karma which takes place without effort that is involuntary action is not binding even a gyani is acting as seen by his bodily movements there can be no karma without effort or without intentions sankalpas therefore there are sankalpas for all they are of two kinds one binding bandha hetu and the other mukti hetu not binding the former must be given up and latter must be cultivated there is no fruit without previous karma no karma without previous sankalpa even mukti must be the result of effort so long as the sense of doership persists talk number 117 
is Hilonis. What is the first step for realization of self? Please help me towards it. There is no use reading books. Another, this one man's request is that of us all. Mercy, quite so. If the self be found in the books, it would have been already realized. What wonder can be greater than that we seek the self in books? Can it be found there? Of course, books have given readers the sense to ask this question and to seek the self. Devotee books are utterly useless. They may all be burnt. The spoken word alone is useful. Grace alone is useful. Others spoke according to their own light until finally they returned to the original question, but Sri Bhagwan remained silent. Talk number 118, Mr. Rangachari, a Telugu Pandit in Vurhi's college at Valyur, asked about Niskam Karma. There was no reply. After time, Sri Bhagwan went up the hill and a Few followed him, including the Pandit. There was a thorny stick lying on the way which Sri Bhagwan picked up. He sat down and began leisurely to work at it. The thorns were cut off, the knots were made smooth, the whole stick was polished with a rough leaf. The whole operation took about six hours. Everyone was wondering at the fine appearance of the stick made of a spike. Spiky material, a seafood boy put in his appearance on the way as the group moved off. He had lost his stick and was at a loss. Sri Bhagwan immediately gave the new one in his hand to the boy and passed on. The Pandit said that this was the matter of fact answer to his question. Talk number 119. Again at the same time there were four dogs in the ashram. Sri Bhagwan said that those dogs would not accept any food not partaken by himself. The Pandit put the matter to the test. He spread some food before them. They would not touch it. Then Sri Bhagwan after a time put a small morsel of it into his mouth. Immediately they fell to and devoured the food. Talk number 120. Later, a man brought two peacocks with their eyes screened when he um, when let loose in Maharishi's presence. They flew away to a distance. They were brought back, but still they flew away. Sri Bhagwan then said, It is no use trying to keep them here. They are not ripe in their minds as these dogs. However much they try to keep the peacocks, they would not remain there even a minute. Talk number 121 talks between the master and two Muslims on a previous occasion. Devotee, he has got a form, Maharshi, who says so. Devotee, well, if God has no form, is it proper to worship idols? Maharshi, leave God alone because He is unknown. What about you? Have you a form? Devotee, yes, I am this and so and so. Mercy, so then you are a man with limbs about three and a half cubits high, with beard, etc. Is it so? Devotee, certainly. Mercy, then do you find yourself so in deep sleep? Devotee, after waking I perceive that I was asleep, therefore by inference I remain thus in deep sleep also. Mercy, if you are the body, why do they breathe the corpse after death? The body must refuse to be breathed. Devotee, no, I am the subtle jiva within the gross body, mercy. So you see that you are really formless, but you are at present identifying yourself with the body. So long as you are form, formful, why should you not worship the formless God as being formful? The questioner was baffled and perplexed. So Maharishi's ways of replying and satisfying the questioner were unique. So my dear friends, I end the video here. Thank you for wa watching and listening this video with patience. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe my channel. Thank you my dear friends. Namaste.